Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Welcome to today's presentation. Today's presenter, this is Muhammad Hilaluddin, Assistant Professor English, Government Haji Muhammad Mohsin College. Okay, today's lecture will be on English for today for class 11 but before before going through this class first let me applaud you for becoming the brand new students of government Haji Muhammad Mohsin College I would like to express my warmest good wishes to you all who have now become the part of the glorious legacy of government Haji Muhammad Mohsin College. Because of the because of the situation, the new normal situation triggered by the challenges of COVID-19, we are here together through digital technology. Let us accept this digital platform and let us try to reap the benefit, benefit of, try to reap the best out of this situation. Okay, my dear students, let us start our class, textual based class. Today's, today's class is from the very first unit, people or institutions making history and the lesson the first lesson is the very first lesson of your English for today book the title is the unforgettable history okay let us move to the text my brothers I stand before you today with a heart overflowing with grief you are fully aware of the events that are going on and understand their import. We have been trying to do our best to cope with the situation. And unfortunately, the streets of Dhaka, Chittagong, Khulna, Rashai, and Rangpur are awash with the blood of our brothers. The people of Bengal now want to be free. The people of Bengal now want to leave. And the people of Bengal now want their rights. Dear students, this is the very fragment, the part of the historic 7th March speech delivered by Bangabundu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, the father of the nation. So we are now going through a classic speech in the history of the world and this speech played a pivotal role in forming the informing the fate of our nation and this speech played instrumental role in leading which leads to our walk to freedom. So when we go through a speech, a passage, it, we must first understand some of the new words which we go through. So our new words in this section, uh, we have all, uh, almost three, you can say, overflowing, the word overflowing, overheld, overpowering. The, there is a word import. Import means significance, importance, purport. And the third one is a wash. A wash means flooded, saturated, bathed, wet, inundated. So if we go through, if we first try to gaze the meaning from the contextual from the contextual perspective it will be easier for us to gauge the meaning but if we fail to understand the meaning from 
our contextual perspective, then we should consult a good dictionary so that we can learn the meaning, appropriate meaning of these words. So now we will move to the second second section, second paragraph. What have we done that was wrong? After the elections, the people of Bangladesh voted as one for me. For the Awami, we had to sit in the National Assembly, draft a constitution for ourselves there, and build our country. The people of this land would thereby get economic, political, and cultural freedom. But it is with regret that I have to report to you today that we have passed through 23 tragic years. Bengal's history of these years is full of stories of torture inflicted on our people, of blood shed by them repeatedly. 23 years of a history of men and women in agony. So, like the first paragraph, we will search for the new words or phrases. First, as one. As one means unitedly, collectively, unanimously. Constitution. Constitution refers to a written charter, rule of established law. Three, so regret means sorrow, agony, distress, anguish. The tragic means sad, deplorable, heartbreaking or heartrending. Agony means pain, anguish, pain, affliction. So in this case, uh, regret and agony uh, are synonymous. Let us move to the third section of the speech. The history of Bengal is the history of a people who have repeatedly made their highways crimson with their blood. We shed blood in 1952, even though we were the victors in the elections of 1952, we couldn't form a government then. In 1958, Ayub Khan declared martial law to ens enslave us, enslave us for the next 10 years. In 1966, when we launched the Six Point Movement, our boys were shot dead on 7th June. When after the movement of 1969, Ayub Khan fell from power and Yahya Khan assumed the reins of the government, the latter declared that he would give us a constitution and restore democracy. We listened to him there. A lot has happened since an elections have taken place. So it is our turn to search the new words. Crimson. The word crimson means bloody, red. Victors means winners. Insled means subjugate, subdue, dominate, overpower. Reigns means controlling power, rule, regime. And the fifth one, restore, means regain, return, renew, revive, revivify, etc. So, we have, we have, uh, in the three paragraphs, we have uh, come across a number of new words and uh, we have our uh, selection of the great speech made by Bangamundu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. But uh, this is uh, this speech uh, is important uh, as part of your question because in your question pattern, the first question you will encounter is choosing the correct answer from the alternatives. Choosing the correct answer from the alternatives. This is the A part of question number one. And it, it you, you will have five questions 
and each question carry one mark. So five marks. So just I have given you just one single example. The word a wash refers to. Dear student, when you go through the text, if you if you learn the new words, then it will be easier for you to answer or to choose the best answer because you have covering first choice, second choice saline, third choice flooded, and fourth one dry. From our from our reading of the passage and where we have learned that uh, a wash means flooded. So the correct answer will be flooded. So if you if you instantly if you instantly learn the synonyms, the word meanings, if you enrich your vocabulary, then it will be possible on your part to answer the question and to secure the full mark, the marks. So the, in this way, you will face four more questions uh, which will be related to uh, word meaning vocabulary. The second section, that means B section of question number one is the question, answering questions, short questions, brief questions. Answer the following questions. In this section, you will get, you will get five questions. Each question carrying two marks. So, uh, the specimen of question I have placed for you. What is your impression about the Bengali nation? The answer is just a specimen answer. You you can you can answer a in a number of way, uh, which is uh, up to the mark, which is to the point. The people of Bengal had to undergo a series of tragic struggles to uproot, eliminate injustice and exploitation. But we can answer this question in other way. We can say that uh, the, the fate of the people of Bengal is tragic, is sad, is full of struggles. So we can answer this question in various ways, but the ways should be to the point, and uh, you have to answer it uh, with in one, two, or at best three sentences. But your answer should not be unnecessarily lengthy. The answer should be to the point, and it should not be unnecessarily lengthy. Now, from our uh, text, you have the second question from, for your uh, question paper. Question number two, the question will be in this way. Read the given text or the following text and make a flowchart, make a flowchart showing the long walk to our freedom. The first one is done for you. And so you see that there are six boxes. And in the first box, you will have a specimen of answer. And the other five boxes must be filled by you. So let us notice the answer in the next slide. So the flow chart showing the long walk to freedom. Look at the specimen answer. Shedding of blood in 1952. If you look at this point, shedding is here, noun of preposition, blood noun. So noun plus of plus noun. 
So that makes it a noun phrase. And then we have the uh, adverb phrase in 1952. So we will try to follow this pattern in every in every answer segment. Look at the second one. Victory in elections. So victory now in preposition election now. So it is noun phrase. Then we have the time reference in 1954. Third one, declaration of martial law. Declaration of martial law in 1958. So declaration now, martial law now, and of is the preposition. And the time reference is in 1958. So we have the noun phrase here, declaration of martial law in 1958. Then 4.4, launching, launching now of preposition, Six point movement noun in 1966. Big, fifth point victory in elections in 1907. And our final point, six point, is declaration of liberation in 1971. So we notice that each and every point in the flow chart has no article and there is no sentence, full sentence or there is no auxiliary verb. So while doing a flowchart we must remember that we must not use article, auxiliary verb or a complete sentence. Whether we should use phrase, word or sentence sentence fragment to do this. Okay, so our learning outcome from our text is two. We have found two. Number one, enriching vocabulary. We have to enrich our vocabulary so that we can have full grasp or understanding of the text which we will read. And then number two, we have uh, here have a uh, glass pop flowchart and that will help us to handle flowchart or tackle flowchart. So the second learning outcome is handling flowchart. Okay, my dear students, thank you for watching this presentation. Let we follow this lot our Motto should be stay home, stay safe. Thank you, everyone.